Now to create the halftone effect in Photoshop, a lot of people might recommend that you just go up to filter and down here to filter gallery, where we have a built-in halftone pattern effect that does do the job, but I'm gonna argue it doesn't do as good of a job as you could do with some other options that we'll outline in this video. Because with this filter gallery, the result is just a little bit blurry and it's not as crisp as the other option that we're about to get into next. So back here inside of the main Photoshop workspace, I have a photo that's already black and white. And if your photo isn't black and white, the first step for you will be desaturating your image by going up to image, adjustments, and then desaturate. Once your image is desaturated, we're ready to do the first step, which is converting our image into a smart object by right clicking on the image layer and going to convert to smart object. With our layer converted, we'll now apply our filter effect, but rather than the filter gallery, we're going to add a color halftone filter. So going up here to filter, pixelate, and then color halftone. Now in the window, we want to set a max radius for the size of the dots around your photo, and this is totally personal preference. We can change it later, but for now, I'll just set it to 10, and then all of these other channel options, we'll just set it to 20 for all of them. But if you're not happy with the final pattern that you get, you can come back into this window and change these to say 40 or 50. You just want them all to be the same value. So with that good to go, I'll click OK. And now that automatically applies this really sharp halftone look onto our image. Now let's say we wanted to change the size of these dots. Well, we could just go back and double click on the color halftone filter that reaccesses the same window as before. And we could say change the max radius to five and click OK. And now that's going to make those dots a little bit smaller and you get the idea. I'll press Command or Control Z because I preferred what we had previously. And now we have a much sharper result than we would have gotten with the filter gallery option. But I think that we can take this a little bit further with a few extra adjustments. The first effect that I'd like to add is some more contrast to make this effect pop more in the image. But we don't want to add that contrast on top of our filter because it's going to affect some of the dots. Instead, we want to apply it to our image within the smart object, which is like a container that holds our image. So I'll double click on the layer thumbnail to access the contents of that smart object. And inside of this separate project tab that it opens, I'll go ahead and add a levels adjustment layer and then just increase the contrast by quite a bit here. It might look a little intense and goofy in this image here, but when we save it back, it's going to look pretty decent. So now with that applied, I'll press command or control S as in save to save the updated contents of our smart object back into the original project. Now we have this nice, rich, intense contrast because of that levels adjustment layer. And the final thing that we can do is add a little bit of noise into this photo so that the bits of black around the photo have some texture rather than this flat color. So to begin, I'll create a new transparent layer at the top of the layer stack. I'll rename this layer to noise. And with my foreground color set to black and that noise layer selected, I'll hold Alt or option and delete to fill that selected layer with my black foreground color. Now to add some noise onto this black layer, we'll go up to filter, noise and add noise. With monochromatic enabled, Gaussian enabled and the amount you can choose whatever you're into, but I'll do something around 40% and click OK. And now to add a bit more texture to this, while that same layer is still active, we'll go up to filter, noise, and dust and scratches. And if I zoom in, we can get a better view of what's going on here. But essentially, we are just adding a little bit more roughness to that grain. So I'm gonna leave the radius down around one pixel and the threshold you can play around with until you're happy with your grain. I'll click OK. Now, of course, this is blocking our layer beneath and we can't see our halftone effect. So let's get rid of all of the black on this layer, but keep the noise by going to the layer blending mode and changing it to screen. So this will hide all of the black from the noise layer and apply the noise onto our halftone effect. Now, since this still looks a little too intense, we can just go to the opacity while our noise layer is selected and just reduce that layer opacity like so 
to make it blend in a little bit more. And now we have this nice texture around the black parts of our halftone effect. So comparing this result to the result of the filter gallery, we have a much sharper version that I think looks a lot better for halftone effects. If you're not happy with how some of the halftone dots disappeared from the highlights, you could just add less contrast to your smart object layer. But regardless, with the tips that you learned here, you can adjust this to whatever suits your project. But if you think you're going to have a hard time remembering any of the steps that we covered in this lesson, I created a free PDF cheat sheet that you can download in the description below that breaks down everything that we covered here in one simple format so you can review it in the future. Again, that is available for free in the description below. And with that, I'll see you back here next time.